back everybody and look who's here watching the shenanigans of bits and bobs and surprises episode five i think we're at it episode five so cousin it is scrutinizing what i'm about to show you and is not well pleased neither am i but bits and bobs and surprises do not always include happy great fantastic news regarding orchids because we have surprises that can be negative and this includes my vanda green hopper here that i got from olympus 1975 on ebay and it did come with markings already and i've never been able to get rid of them so now the new growths are coming out with markings as well which is very upsetting in my opinion because if this isn't done anything for two years and has not improved I don't see that there's any chance for it to improve so my last resort is to do what I saw on one of Maria Young's videos if I can find it I'll pull a link down below I'm putting it into the Sun to dry out and burn out whatever that is it's not going away it's getting more even though I have sprayed it with a fungicide and then a bactericide, etc, etc. So now it's out on the elements, having to deal with a hot sun as it comes through. Today is a rather windy day, so there is a cooling wind. But the principle here is to burn it off and dry off whatever nonsense that is. We'll see if it works. If not, I have made my piece and if it has to go, it will go I'm okay with that I have not made my piece with this here though this is my precious Mona Chica and Penny Lane if you're watching this I'm very 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 sorry I am surprised at this it started right after she started to push buds and I she lost four leaves very quickly just like what you see here on the lower level of the stem straight away started to lose four wheat leaves so I upped the calcium a little bit and I put some dragon's blood around the stem because leaves drying off from the stem outwards I don't like it I stopped the process I don't know, it, it just stopped and all the leaves were fine and I was hoping for a root. Maybe you saw that in another episode. And it started again. So before we say goodbye to this one, I just wanted to show you that surprises can also be in a negative sense, which is a shame. My Monachica is on her way out and there's nothing I can do about it. I will take her apart and see what's going on in the stem and if it's worthwhile I'll document it if not I'll just tell you in another update so Penny Lane I'm ever so sorry I am absolutely clueless and next to that while we're on the subject of what's going on fail I tried to propagate Bobalicious flower stem from the Phalaenopsis and I mentioned that normally I have never ever had this method succeed for me and here we are I still have as yet to have this method succeed for me two are terrible two are still green so we'll get rid of terribles and these green ones we shall continue to monitor. So there's that. Let's keep going. I, I thought they were all goners, but they're not. Shh, don't tell anybody. We've got buds on the Gloriosa. As it's a super windy day, I'm out here quite a lot today, just spraying down my Chao Praia with uh, RO water at 6.3 pH, just to keep some hydration and some humidity around those roots. 
and I just wanted to show you remember our companion plant here from when I was showing the stay home and hang out with me and the Vanda video look at it <laughs> it dies back which is great I didn't even have to do any kind of manipulation or anything and guess what on top of that when I said I was going to leave it on because there was two root stumps that were damaged by hail look the humidity of that plant for the meantime helped the root extended where's the other one I don't want to damage it now but you can see in here you can see there the root extended <laughs> so yeah I'm using this plant even though it's dead now to help with a little bit of humidity there's a new root growing there and a companion root sticking out in the back there so I'm working with it I'm doing the best I can to maintain some form of humidity here so that's a good sign <laughs> this piece of weed helped <gasps> again shh don't tell anybody Tabosuko Tex is about to bloom and we'll just pretend we didn't see that Look at Ascocentrum Ampoyathea, Pink Dreamer. We are now in the stage of mummification, <laughs> but in a good sense, because you can see that their roots are extending. And the longest root now, what I'm going to do is just keep it wrapped up in that microfiber to keep it moist and soft, because eventually I would like to train those roots into the pot both of them front and back and the idea is of course not to lay it on its side but if I have to I will it'll look funky for a few years but the plant will correct itself upright and I'll play with the light yeah so the mummification process of how to control your roots this is the plan Mylalia harpophila Remember in my introduction about Rapiculus lalias and how I have not transplanted her yet? Because I was waiting for this. Look at that. I have a new growth starting. In the meantime, I have treated this Harpophila exactly the same as my other ones that are already in their rock setup. I kept the media damp on the surface every once in a while I sprayed some seaweed and I honestly don't know if I have roots in there because I wasn't messing with her simply because she was a very weak plant from when I got her and I already lost a leaf even though I didn't move her or disturb her but now there's hope and I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing what it does next. This is another little angrecoid I haven't actually featured. This is my Oyaniela polystichis. And I'm trying to get it to adjust to my preferred setup of full leka and self-watering. For the time being, it's protesting. Last year, it's grown only one root a little stump that I'm keeping wet with some sphagnum moss on top but now it's growing a second root which is fantastic but why do you have to grow in between a leaf joint? Ugh, can you make my life a little bit more easier and just come out the side and go down into the media? So yeah and you can see it has the same spots and markings as my plectral minthos caudatus dealing with the same issue and it's an angrecoid. This is a touch and go situation with my polystachys but I'll do my best if I have to remove that leaf on the left 
to get that root down into the media, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But at least it's still doing something, and that's great news for me. And it is time to lift the curtain on the pièce de résistance back here in my Top Gun space where all the big guys are because this is the Logini Pandorata and look what I've been hiding that is a flower spike and it has been developing for the past three months I've started started and I thought it was just a new growth but it is bolt upright it tried to it would have been a bit more pendant because of the way the pot is but it went straight up and there it is I'm going to finish off this little bits bobs and surprises on a positive note the start was a little bit of a hiccup I would say but surprises come in all shapes and sizes they can be good and they can be bad so we're going to end on the good and thank you everybody for watching watch out for some Pandorata blooms on an orchid that has was not supposed to bloom for the next five years I'll take it thank you everybody take care and I'll see you next time bye